Battlefield 5 builds on the Frostbite technology in some exciting ways, and this week's beta gives us our very first look at how it performs on console. PS4 Pro and Xbox One X are in the spotlight today, with a view to see how close we can get to a preferred 4K 60fps output. Content wise, what we get in the beta is fairly straightforward. There's a conquest mode supporting up to 64 players giving us a full stress test of the engine, across the canals of Rotterdam and the snowy slopes of Narvik. And while each map looks beautiful in its own way, it's hard to shake the sense this is still early unoptimized code, as you'll soon see. Map design is a real highlight first of all. These two beautifully designed areas build on Frostbite's ability to push tessellated detail on buildings, many of which are destructible with the right vehicle. Parallax occlusion maps are also a standout point on the Narvik stage of snow, adding depth and pop to the hilly inclines leading to a village. You even have weather and time of day changes, adjusting the lighting on Rotterdam streets. From streaks of sunshine creating lens flares on the camera, to fog or snowfall at set points, weather has a big impact on not only a map's aesthetic, but also your visibility. This marriage of technology and gameplay courses through the Battlefield series veins. A lot of it is to do with the post effects and filters, the fishbowl curvature to the camera, the film grain, chromatic aberration and even the heavy lens flare all deliberately disrupt the frame's clarity for a more grounded dirty effect. Camera exposure levels adjust automatically too, which can add to the challenge. For example, black levels have a real crunch to them, a pitch of darkness that makes it harder to pick out enemies on stairwells after turning from brighter areas. A sharp contrast between light and dark and specular points on Rotterdam's brick roads look great even in a standard colour space, but with high dynamic range enabled it really sings. That's the positive side of Battlefield 5. It's no secret that Frostbite excels in rendering maps with scale, maps with destructible elements and lots of players. One part I especially like is the way the game emphasises that scale to you with the respawn map. Once you select a zone or squad member, the camera zooms down seamlessly to the ground level, keeping your sense of perspective intact. It's a great trick, carried over from the excellent Battlefield 1. The only downside is that the frame rate is a little sluggish during that switch, and you'll occasionally catch texture pop in, but otherwise it's great. Also a plus is the way in which all of this is presented on a 4K TV. For Xbox One X here, you're looking at a dynamic res setup similar to prior DICE titles. Now after being killed off, the player looks to the sky to speed up a bleed out, and in that moment, rendering load is theoretically at a low point. Based on that, the top resolution is 3840 by 2160 on Xbox One X. But most results tend to come in at 3456 by 1944. At 90% on each axis of a true 4K, it's still an excellent turnout for the system though. As for the lowest figure, that's seen on the respawn map, a demanding overview that pushes Xbox One X down to 3284 by 1836, 85% of 4K, and in fairness, not a massive stretch from the top possible number. All of this translates to something very appealing on an Ultra HD set. And while there are artifacts on edges that look similar to checkerboarding as per Battlefield 1, it's hard to make a definitive call on the nature of the processing going on behind the scenes, on top of the motion blur and other post effects. The image does speak for itself, geometry is crisply rendered, and the only part that can look a little rough is fine details. Power cables or small pipes and scaffolding at a distance show subpixel breakup that flickers as you run by. But besides that, it's a gorgeously presented game on X. All of that takes an inevitable hit on the less powerful PS4 Pro. 3200 by 1800 is the upper bounds here, but that's very rare, and we go down to 2304 by 1296 on Sony's machine on average, a 60% scale on each axis of a 4K image. It's a much bigger hit, and the lower bounds go down further still, to 2176 by 1224, or 56% of 4K. The fact there's such a small difference on both machines between the top and bottom metric is surprising. Possibly with more digging and full access to all modes in the final game, there will be more aggressive drop to resolution. The dynamic scaling feature of recent Battlefield games is a real saving grace though, and as small as the range is on X and Pro, barely 5%, the switch is well hidden. Based on what the beta is delivering so far, it seems to suggest that if you want the best image on console, you know which one to pick. Pitting the two side by side though, there really isn't too much else in it. 
Texture detail loads in at different times, but with the level fully rendered, the assets are identical. Shadows too are the same, and the only drawback on PS4 Pro is visibility at range. The slight softness that comes with a 1296p image versus 2106p on X is a factor when looking across Rotterdam's long streets in pure daylight. There is slightly more shimmer on those fine details on PS4 Pro, but all in all, you are getting close visual settings between the two otherwise. That even extends to draw distance, a key facet of any map built on Frostbite. Unfortunately, neither Pro or X cover themselves in glory here. Pop-in is very distracting across both consoles, and as you can see on this building ahead, flower pots abruptly appear on both, one after another. The distance threshold is the same on each, and the same goes for shadow filtering. Shade only feels in close to the player as you walk forward. Combined, it looks subpar, and detracts massively from the beautiful details of the rest of each stage. Of course, the unpolished state of the game as it stands may well be down to its current beta status. There's still plenty of time ahead of the November 20th launch to tweak and optimize both console releases. Other aspects of the visuals look like they're in equally dire need of work though. Up close, the details of each stage can look often unfinished, almost like placeholders for a better version. Texture mapping while crawling is surprisingly low resolution for example. Rotterdam streets are blocky and pixelated, and the same goes for the snow on Narvik. RAM usage has to be carefully managed with these huge maps, but these materials look like a huge cut below the standard of the rest of the game. Possibly, Xbox One X could afford a higher grade texture pack, seeing as it does have more RAM at its disposal, but hopefully this isn't the final look of the game on either console. Then there are the reflections. Between the glossy marble floors, windows, and even water, pre-rendered cube maps are planted everywhere but always look basic and inaccurate to the scene. It's possible I'm obsessing over it too much, but these window reflections just look wrong to my eyes. It's hard to see it staying for the final product. Again, it's like a placeholder asset is being used until the details of the map are fully locked down and a more accurate cube map can be swapped in. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, and many games get away with approximations, but it has to be closer than this. Speaking on the water for a second, I love the way it looks at first glance in Rotterdam. The only trouble is, actually diving into it shatters the illusion, and it looks too solid and physical. Whether you're afloat or swimming under it, the river surface is a hard, intangible layer that doesn't really react to the player. It lacks a transparent element too, and so diving in and looking up doesn't give you much visibility above as you'd think. This is probably wading into nitpick territory, but it's only to the game's credit that this stands out when all the rest of it looks so good. Fortunately, this is all a beta, and there's no question of that in the number of glitches you'll come across. Mainly, my experience of glitches is centered around awkward body animations when climbing, and strange body ragdoll physics. Sometimes enemies will be downed and just float mid-air, as if pulled by their midriff by an invisible rope. It's happened several times, and while hardly game-breaking, it does attract everyone's attention in the middle of a firefight to see a spinning floating soldier. But again, it's all part of the deal with the beta, and I'm sure this one will be fixed. With that in mind, performance is worth looking at next. Xbox One X first. This is a big conquest map after all, and smaller maps should fare better, but the range here goes from around 50 to 60 FPS regardless of stage. V-Sync is fully engaged at least, but these bursts of frame drops really stick out. They can be sustained for long stretches too, mainly triggered by long views of an area with lots of geometry on screen. Effects and firefights amplify that further, and the lowest result I've seen is 45 FPS on X. It's hardly what you'd call an ideal state of affairs. The question is whether, really, we're just seeing a rerun in performance terms of prior Battlefield titles on console. 64 player maps always present a challenge for the CPU. On the other hand, again, we can't draw too many conclusions here. This is a stress test of incomplete code. A quick disclaimer here, one of the bigger worries is how more vehicles, more destruction and clusters of opponents in a contested area could drag it down. I've only had a brief spell with this beta so far, and there's always a sense you could do more, with extra weapon unlocks and abilities. But as a taster for those initial hours, you get the idea. Neither map is especially better or worse than the other at least, and weather effects don't appear to change the outlook in performance either. The sense is that Xbox One X struggles with geometrically complex scenes, with lots of physics-based objects in view. 
while hard to get an exact match in scenes, we can look at PS4 Pro in isolation. The range is roughly the same here, from 50 to 60 FPS and always at the same spots too. This turn near the river in Rotterdam for example, tanks performance in much the same way. Perhaps a more aggressive use of dynamic resolution scaling could have helped, a lower lower bounds. But that's assuming it's a GPU bottleneck, and if the trouble is handling that high play count and draw calls on streaming data, lowering the pixel count would make little difference. One worry here is, PS4 Pro's lowest results, when they do happen, are often more drastic than the competition, dropping to 40 FPS in the worst case. Again, there may be CPU implications at play here, and Pro also has a clock speed and cache disadvantage compared to Xbox One X. The beta is limited in what it can show us. In the breadth of maps and modes, there's so much more to see with Battlefield 5, not least its take on the Battle Royale phenomenon. As a summary though, it is Xbox One X that comes out on top in 4K delivery and a potentially smoother frame rate, while most other details are the same as Pro. With a polish up of the sub 60 FPS performance, the low quality reflections and removing certain glitches, this could be one of the best mainline battlefields yet. Of course, there's questions hanging over how the base machines perform in the beta relative to these enhanced models. And so I'll be back with another look at those down the line. But for now, if you did enjoy this early peek at Battlefield 5, don't forget to like or subscribe and hit the bell to receive notifications as each video lands. The 4K source file to this analysis is on our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net. And of course, you can contact us directly on Twitter. But until next time, thanks for watching.